Excellent. Hey, what's up, guys, and welcome to my monthly Q&A series. It's called Probing Paul. This is episode number six, and it's where I answer your guys' questions that you ask me each month. So uh, last month, we took a look at uh, AMD versus NVIDIA. That's actually been a running theme for a while. You can see all the history of Probing Paul is going back through. It's like looking through the sands of time. Um, anyway, all of these questions from today came directly from the YouTube video that I posted uh, about a month ago, and I usually post these at the end of the month. So this is the one for July, starting off with a question from Isaac Embry. Uh, basically says he's got a, a hard drive with Windows installed. He wants to get an SSD and switch his operating system over to the SSD from the hard drive. How do you do it? What's a good way? Uh, Isaac, a very good question. This is something that lots of people, if you haven't done it already, you probably should do at some point. Um, my first recommendation would be to not try to copy your old operating system onto the new SSD. Instead, remove your drives from the system, pop the new SSD in, get a fresh install Windows installed on there. The reason I do this is, be, or I recommend this, is because I think it's a very good habit to get into to know how to reformat a system. Because if you ever get a virus in the future or anything like that, it's just the best means of virus removal. Wipe everything, reformat. If you don't want to do that, I'd recommend uh, looking into an SSD that has full featured uh, backup or uh, imaging software. Usually those are based on a Cronus True Image. In my experience, you can buy a Cronus True Image uh, for one single license for 30 bucks, but um, that might be a little bit expensive. There's tons of SSD manufacturers though who include data migration utilities with their S SSDs. I know like OCZ does, uh, I think Seagate does, Crucial does. Uh, Samsung has their SSD Magician utility, which I think uses a Kronos 2, but if it doesn't, it still works pretty well. Samsung's SSG, SSD Magician is actually a pretty good one. Kingston. Kingston's another one who I know uses it, uh, and that will get you the most easiest means of, of transferring over. Question number two comes from Nathan Mitchell. Uh, when do you think the new TI and Titan level cards will be coming from NVIDIA? Do you think it's possible we'll see a Pascal GPU with a core clock over 2 gigahertz? Well, we're already getting close to that when it comes to Pascal GPUs. Um, here's the Titan X that was just recently announced. It is the Titan X Pascal Edition, or Titan XP, depending on how you want to call it. This is actually supposed to launch in just a few days, I think. I think on August 2nd is when it's supposed to come out. You know, and it's Pascal-based, and it's got all the super high-end features and everything. It's really expensive, though, $1,200. Uh, most gamers are going to be holding out for a 1080 Ti. That has not been announced. There have not been many rumors on that. We really don't know any solid information except that since there's a Titan X, you can reasonably assume based on prior launches from NVIDIA that there will be a lesser, slightly lesser version of the Titan X or the Titan X Pascal version that will be the 1080 Ti. Usually it means um, they overclock a little bit faster, but maybe doesn't have quite the full complement of CUDA cores. Sometimes it has less memory, but um, they only use 12 gigs for the Titan X. I was kind of expecting 24. So yeah. Uh, 1080 Ti is definitely probably going to be the top end of this range when it comes to both performance as well as being reasonably priced, if, if that can be used when it comes to high-end NVIDIA GPUs. But um, yeah, Titan X is, I don't know, I get less excited when it's just so expensive. Matias, or Matias, I'm sorry if I'm pronouncing that wrong, asks, uh, well, he's from Argentina. Hello to Argentina. Uh, he has played, have I ever played World of Warcraft? Yes, way too much. Uh, I think... He's thinking about buying a GPU, he doesn't want to know which one's the best choice, he just plays WoW. Basically, if you're just playing WoW, then look for the cards that are uh, being marketed towards MOBA gamers, um, you know, like uh, like League of Legends and that kind of thing, because those games typically require a lot less GPU horsepower, and WoW is fits into that category for sure. Uh, if you're looking for new cards, because if you are buying a new card, if you're buying a graphics card, I find going towards the newer ones is often a good way to do it. 1060 would be a good option, but probably a little overpowered for what you need. 480 would also be a very good option, um, also probably overpowered for what you need. And uh, AMD has just announced but not launched yet the 470 and 460 GPUs. I bet those would be really good choices for you. New uh, architecture, newer hardware, and you'll probably get a lot of bang for your buck out of those. Uh, you could also look at buying slightly older used cards, so like GTX 970s right now are going for a lot less than they used to, especially if you uh, look at a, a used one or something like that. Uh, and even kind of mid-range to low-end cards from NVIDIA's, or from AMD's side, um, you know, now that the new generation of cards is coming out, so like a, a 370 or something like that could also be an option. Next question from Hank Wallace. He's asking, what is your setup for the overhead camera that you use from time to time? How is it suspended and what camera is it? Good question, Hank. I will show you. It's right here. All right, so this is, this is completely just rigged out of pieces and parts that I had lying around. So this is just a big old C-clamp 
think I got that for Christmas back when we moved into the house, and I was like, I need tools, clamps. Gotta get, gotta, gotta give them the clamps. Um, attached to that is this, which is like a little piece of something that was came from lighting something. I don't even know, but it's got a little. So I use that to kind of attach it to the clamp. And then I have this piece, which is, I think, part of a tripod that actually has a 3 8 inch threaded thing on there, and that goes to a little ball head so I can actually adjust it around. So this thing's really janky, but I can attach it to any of my overhead 2x4 beams since I have this framework going on up above me. And if you want to see more of that, check out my garage work log series because I have all the stuff I've built in here I have documented over the years, or over the last couple years that I've been doing it. Anyway, so that's how I mount it. Um, I do have a couple other options, and I am trying to get something a little bit more permanent. I want to get a few more of just these little ball heads and just mount them up there permanently so I don't have to keep moving this thing around. Lately, if I need to feed video over to the computer, I'm just using uh, my second camera since I have two uh, Panasonic Lumix GH4s. Really good cameras. I use this lens on it, which is the Panasonic 12-35 because it's small and lighter weight than my other lenses, which aren't readily available, but those are much heavier. This is pretty heavy for this configuration, not gonna lie. I get a little nervous about it and I make sure everything's tightened down. But this does have a very clean HDMI out. It's the same HDMI out I'm using to record with right now. Other than that, I will also sometimes throw my LX100 up there because this has a, a time-lapse feature built into it. So I will run that. Or I will take a webcam, uh, like the one that's right back there. And I can also attach that up there and feed that over and do time-lapse coverage as well. Next up, Uptown NYC asks, did Paul do tech videos for Newegg at one point? I guess he's asking to the audience, not me, but I will answer nonetheless. Uh, yes, I did used to do Newegg TV videos. It's been almost two years now since I uh, left Newegg, but if you guys want to check out an old Newegg TV video, that's one of my favorites, try the golden build. I'll post this link down in the video's description. This is me and Kyle, and um, it was Z77 build. This is back in 2012, December 2012. And I, this was just a fun build. The build itself turned out pretty nice. We did a little bit of custom painting on the car. It's really early stuff when it comes to painting. And then Kyle gradually transitions over the course of the video to Mr. Bling, and you know he gets all the gold. He suddenly has a gold shirt on, and and he just he turns into a pimp by the end of it. So um, there's there's Kyle, you know, doing his doing the pimp Kyle thing. Anyway, everyone everyone go check that video out. It's it's still funny. It's got long legs. TXM asks, will you do a review of the RX 472? Yes, I will. Or at least I intend to. Uh, I don't know of any that are on their way soon, and I think they're actually launching pretty soon. I don't know. Uh, my communication with AMD has been kind of like it. They get a lot of communication, and then it falls off for a while. I haven't been talking to anyone about the 460s and 470s in the near future. I mean, I plan to cover them, but, you know, you got to work with people and get samples and all that stuff. Even if I don't get a sample, I'll probably just buy one, but... Anyway, still waiting on uh, some follow-ups for that, I suppose. Eve, Evan, uh, even, Evan McClelland asks, uh, would you recommend putting an aftermarket CPU cooler on a non-K CPU? I have an i5-6500. Not sure if I should get a quieter and more efficient cooler or just deal with the stock man. Or stock one. <laughs> Cheers, man. Love your work. Thank you, Evan. Uh, appreciate that. And yes, I don't necessarily recommend getting an aftermarket cooler for you know, like a 6500 or something like that. But that's not to say it won't do you any good. The stock heat sink fans that ship with Intel processors in particular are, you know, functional. They get the job done, but especially over time, the fans usually start to gum up. They're not using the, the, as nice of a bearing in there. They tend to get louder over time, and they are not as efficient of coolers. I wouldn't recommend spending more than 30 bucks on one because, you know, doing that is you're going for overclocking performance, and you're not really going to have that with a non not unlocked CPU. Um, but here's a couple that I like. Zalman's uh, CNPS5X Performa I've used a few times. 26 bucks on Amazon right now. Uh, it's got some copper heat pipes and it's got a little uh, fluid, I think it's a fluid bearing fan. Anyway, it's, it's, some, it's a fluid, it's got fluid in there or something which makes it better. Anyway, uh, also really easy to install, especially on AMD. Um, it uses the existing mount, so there's no backplate for it. So um, also nicer if you're not overclocking because you don't have to worry about quite as much about having a ton of uh, uh, pressure on the CPU. Uh, here's another one from Arctic Freezer, the Arctic Freezer 7. It's just one has tons of good reviews. 20, a little over $20. So these are going to get you, they'll cool down your CPU, which isn't as big of a deal, um, but they will be quieter for you and they'll have uh, long, they'll stay quieter longer. The Johnny Tonton Show asks, Paul, should I buy a current gen AMD CPU or wait for the hyped Zen? 
Well, Johnny Tonton Show, uh, that is a very good question. That is the eternal question, at least until Zen actually launches. We just uh, saw some news just this past week that Zen's expectations have kind of been pushed back even a little bit more. Yes, they are still supposed to launch in 2016 by the end of the year, but it's probably not going to be a wide release. There's probably not going to be a ton of the chips available. They're talking about Q1 or Q2 2017 more likely. So I would, I would recommend wait for AM4 because that's going to be the new platform. It's going to be a new socket. None of the old CPUs or AP, APUs are going to work with it. You're going to need to buy a new one anyway. But if you wait for that, which I'm hoping comes earlier this year rather than later, you can at least get that new platform. Even if you get a, an APU or something based on the last generation, you should be able to drop in a new Zen CPU once they're available. All right, that is my last question. I'm going to finish here by saying if you guys want to send me anything, uh, Paul's Hardware PO Box 4325 Diamond Bar, California 91765 is where you can send that stuff to, and I'm always appreciative of stuff that we get, even if it gets us in trouble by showing it on the live stream because it's an adult toy. Don't send any more of those because we've been told we can't show them, so we will not, you'll not get your proper amount of appreciation. Speaking of this computer next to me, which I wasn't speaking of, but I'm going to say it anyway. Uh, look at this computer next to me. I just built it, uh, working on some testing and stuff for that. So if you are not already, subscribe to my channel, hit the like button. Uh, stay tuned because I'm going to have a follow-up on this one very soon in the next couple days. And uh, yeah, I hope you guys have enjoyed this video and learned a little bit of something new. Have a good one. We'll see you next time.